we've got this really cool guest. I kind of want to bring her on. Uh, yeah, I know you're cool with it. Bye, Anthony. All righty, Jenna, you ready? Hey, let's go. All right, we got to run. Oh. Hello and welcome to Talk Even. Hi. <laughs> I'm Eric Murphy. And this is Jenna Belk. Hi, everyone. It is June 16th, 2019. It's Father's Day. And um, I'm so happy that we're all here together. Uh, it's season three, episode 24, and I've just... Oh, my goodness. Jenna, thank you so much for coming out. <laughs> yeah, it's the least I could do. <laughs> so, um, let's see. I know you've been on the nonprofits. You were on the Atheist Experience last week. And uh, you get to be on with me. So, I think you might be going backwards, but... No, okay not that. at all. <laughs> I'm just dancing around. Well, dig it. Dig it. Um, so, I kind of wanted to introduce the audience to you. Okay. Who are you? Um, well, now... I'm officially the newest co-host addition to the Atheist Experience. Yeah! <laughs> so that feels really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a guest host, I guess, on a bunch of other things. So just I kind of fill in where I can and try to yeah. talk about things that I think can help. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to see you here. I know that um, I was here when you first came to the ACA. Mm-hmm. And um, you were a baby atheist. Yeah, you? I kind of adopted that name on a couple on the secular <laughs> sexuality shows that I've been on. I've been yeah. labeled the baby atheist. For well, <laughs> it's 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 amazing because that was not too long ago. No, less than a year. Less than a year. Yeah, about six months actually. And I, the 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 wonderful thing is, is every time I see you, you're like a sponge. I mean, <laughs> every time we're talking, you just you just want to know more. You want to explore, and you are not afraid of facing down those things that might make you uncomfortable or might challenge your preconceived notions about things. And it's admirable. It's something that I absolutely love. And mm -hmm. I, I really, really hope that people can get that when they see you on the air, that it's not just being the person who needs to know everything going, you know, starting out, but it's about kind of confronting your own, you know, what you don't know and, and learning together. I think that people can relate to that. And I, I, it's awesome. And yeah. It's brave. And it's interesting because it's not like becoming an atheist was like an ending point. Right. Becoming an atheist was like a starting point. I, I realized that I had to readdress how my brain works and how to live my life. And um, I've literally been obsessed with learning the past six months because I've become almost addicted to that discovery of being wrong because I've been wrong about so many things now that I'm like seeking out okay 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 let's find what else am I wrong about let's let's talk about something new guys <laughs> and it's just it's fascinating to me it's fun well, and and it's it's addressing that discomfort we've talked about that discomfort quite a bit right and um I like I said, I, I could just gush over you. I'm, I'm really happy that you're here. Um, I do want to get a couple of announcements out before we dive right in. Mm -hmm. um, I missed everybody. I'm so happy to be back on the air. Um, I'm back at the ACA uh, for my medical leave, and I'm ready to take on the world. And I'm, I'm just, I'm excited, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who helped support me through that. Um, I also want to say happy Father's Day to happy those fathers who, uh, who deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> to my grandpa, uh, to the father I wish I would have had my whole life, but I get to have now, Jeff. Happy Father's Day. Um, love you. And uh, I, I, I do have a couple things. Um, I'm not going to be here next weekend. Okay. I am going to be in Tennessee, actually, doing the Ask and Wonder event That's at the right. Donaldson Fellowship. Yeah, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I believe it's free, and uh, people can check that out uh, by going to askandwonder.com. Um, I'm going to be uh, doing a roundtable against two presuppositional apologists. Oh, my because gosh. Because I hate myself. <laughs> that um, should be fun, though. <laughs> it, it does seem fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do it. Um, as always, we're going to be thanking our top five patrons right around the middle of the show. So if you would like to become a patron, we don't have major donors. Our Patreon is patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. That's patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. Every dollar counts. 
Um, and we really deeply, sincerely appreciate it because it, it empowers us to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we do not have full lines, but we're getting close. If you're a theist caller, we're going we're gonna to have preference for you. You can always call 512-686-0279. That's 512-686-0279. Was there anything else before we jumped in? Um, did you want to talk about... Um just kind of the different dynamic yeah, that sure. I bring. Um, just we, we started talking a little bit before the show about why I'm here, and I'd been reading the comments on the atheist experience, and a couple people are kind of wondering, you know, what I have to bring, because I'm not as educated or as informed as some of the as every single host that I've seen on any of these shows so far. Um, but the I think that what it is is that I I'm still so fresh in the old way of thinking, mm-hmm. and understand this um, this new dynamic enough to still relate yeah um, without fully understanding the you know the actual rules and of logic yet you know it's that you don't have to be fully educated to get it you yeah. know and 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 you have to dive in it's 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 funny um, I was getting the same kind of comments under the uh, my my last debate because it was my first Right. You know, public debate, and people are saying you you don't start out perfect. You have to start somewhere, right. and um, the fact that you're going on this journey publicly is unbelievable. I'm really, really glad you're doing it. Thanks. So, yeah. yeah All right. Should be fun. So, who did you want to talk to first? Let's hit up Chad. Let's talk to Chad. Chad helped us uh, test the lines before the show. Chad, you're live with Eric and Jenna. How are you doing? Oh, great! Wonderful. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, yes, thank, sir. Hi, thank Jenna. You for calling in. Hi, Eric. All right. Okay. I was wondering how Jenna got the position because I'm interested in hosting a show one day. Wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I, you, you know what? San there's, Diego. There's so. plenty of room on the internet. I mean, you can start on you can start up on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I've it, seen. It's, um, it's, I, I want. I, I want to thank you guys uh, so much. First of all for encouraging critical thinking and encouraging people to think because what religion does is makes people not really um, question anything about religion. Mm -hmm. Literally read the book and um, do what the book says and believe it 100%. Mm -hmm. And despite all the flaws, all the uh, the, the immoral stuff in most books. Um, so I want to thank you so much for opening people's eyes into thinking whether, you know, they keep believing or not, that's a different story. Whether their religion is beneficial or not, that's a different story. But at least so they're being wanna, critical. So thank you, guys. Yeah, well, you gotta, we got to think. We, ha- we have a brain, yeah. and we got to think. So right. what did you want to talk about? So today I want to talk about uh, bias and both, you know, atheists and uh, um, uh, theists. And uh, the reason why I'm saying this, because usually the conversation goes this way. Um, Give me a reason to believe that there is God. Otherwise, by default, um, you know, there is no God. Um, You know, you have to, you, you have the burden of proof. And which is true, I agree with you guys. However, um, you know, there are signs, there are um, things that you might want to think about and consider to um, not to make a conclusion there is God, but to have doubt whether or not those gods actually exist. And I'm not talking about the classical God, you know, the Abrahamic God or Abrahamic religions. I'm, I'm talking about, um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Sumerian civilization. I mean, I, I've, I've studied some, but why don't you describe your God to us so we don't talk past you? Okay, so it so I, I, doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping this God, I'm just, just to be clear. Yeah. I'm not, I, it's not like I'm saying I have a God that I'm, I worship and I, I love and he does the miracles. And, and does good things for me. No. Um, the reason why I, I say... Uh, Wait, are you... you know, hold on. Be, yes. Chad, is yes. this a God that you believe in? Okay, so I believe there are gods that exist okay. or existed or 
They still exist. Okay. Okay. How, how, how do you know? About? Yes. Okay. So look, that's that's why I brought up the Sumerian um, um, uh, civilization. So when you look at the the, the tablets that they found, archaeologists found found, mm -hmm. and they translated the the the, 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 the language and what they're talking about. Um, there is there is evidence that the, those people, whoever they claim that there were gods, existed. Sure. So, so you uh, might say it's a mythic. Yeah. Okay. Go so ahead. so uh, I'm I'm just I want to make sure that I'm following you. If I buried okay. a copy of Spider Man, the comic uh -huh. book, and correct brought it back up, you know, uh, two thousand mm -hmm. years from now, three five thousand years from now, would that mean right. that? Spider-Man existed as a real deity in this world. You know, it's a it's a it's a great uh, point. Uh, however, when you uh, start from that, uh, you know, the Sumerian civilization and those tablets, and you go to the Abrahamic religions, and you you make a comparison, and you see the the differences between the two or similarities. You see, there is a smoking gun. So, so what I'm talking about. Wait, I'm not wait a second. Wait a second. That's Where's right. the smoking gun? What smoking gun? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I understand that uh, you know uh, billions and billions of believers does not make the religion true. Correct. Or the gods true. I understand that, and I, I, I'm with you 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. Um, so, so where's the evidence? Pick, let's say. Like I said, the problem with you guys is that well, but where's show the evidence? evidence. Show me. Like, like I said, see, see what, what you're trying to do here is, uh, is, is you say and give me evidence. So no matter what evidence you get, or no matter no matter what um, what what things that is brought to light. You, you dismiss that. Bullshit. But we haven't given us you. any. Yeah, no, hold no, on, no, Chad. No, no, I'll tell you why okay. it's bullshit. I'm, I'm holding okay. a mug. Okay. I'm holding a mug right here. I'm, I, I, if, if you're not watching, <coughs> I am holding a mug. This mug says godless bitches on okay. it. There's more evidence for this mug than there is for your God currently. I'm asking, no, I'm not God. asking for good evidence even. I'm asking for evidence at all. Something. Start with okay. a it's piece of God. evidence what, so and then maybe, from there move start, on to more. Maybe start with why do you, why do you, Chad, believe that mm -hmm. there are gods? Mm -hmm. Just right there. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, um, so like I said, it's uh, the, the problem you guys having is that you but why won't you answer my question, Chad? Quote unquote evidence. You keep telling no, me I'll, what I'll our problem you, is, and you won't no, answer I'll, my I'll, question. Oh, so you dismiss everything. So that's part. But of I haven't what dismissed you anything answer. yet. I'm yeah. trying to ask you a question, and you won't give me an answer. Instead, you're going to give me a defensive response about how I'm not listening, and I'm trying to ask you a question. Okay. Well, I'm not saying you're not listening at all. What I'm saying is you're biased by the the, the fact bias? that you're dismissing. Okay, so so here's the thing. Uh, I'm uh, I'm bringing up a, an example of quote unquote gods that um, you know archaeologists uh, found there existed, and you're dismissing all the idea, saying that oh that's uh, if I if I if I bury a a book of Spider Man somewhere for for thousands of years and I, someone finds it. Does it mean that's a, that's a god or not? Right. Okay. So that's what you what are you doing? Yeah, so, no, what, no. Okay. So, so hold on. So what happened there was he he was trying to predict where you were going with that. He saw where you were going, and he was trying to kind of shorten the conversation because we're on such a short show when we're trying to get to as many callers as we can. And so he's trying to help kind of get to the okay. point really quickly. He wasn't trying to dismiss okay. you. Yeah. So this is so this is well, let's back up just a little bit and just just let's start from why why do you believe that gods exist? Let's just start right there and then we can take your answer and then we'll dissect yeah. it and try to figure out what's going on. And, and, and to be clear, I, I want to add on to that. Chad, the reason I did that, yeah. um, she's absolutely right, is the, the cutting forward piece was the logic that you just used was poor logic. And I showed you an example by using the exact same logic with Spider-Man to show you that it's not a good methodology of getting to know what is true. 
that is not summarily dismissing for bad reasons. If it should be dismissed because it's bad reasoning, then it should be dismissed, and you should want that too. Don't you want to know what's true, Chad? Absolutely. Okay, so then why would you be upset when you find out that you were using bad logic? That should be helpful. Oh, I'm, I'm not upset. Okay, <laughs> Believe perfect. Believe me, I'm not upset. Perfect. I'm not upset okay, at all. Cool. No, no. Okay, uh, so cool. uh, like, okay, like yeah, you no, said, no, go ahead and, and tell us why you believe that those gods existed. Okay, like I said, um, I suggest, okay, even if it, it's not about, you know, me wanting to, to believe that they exist or so, uh, I'm putting out the possibility that they do exist. How do you and, know that? Uh, and, uh, Why do you believe okay, hold, that? Hold on a second. Okay, okay, yes. Fair question. So, so you said, you said first of all, you said you're God. Uh, it's not my God, okay? I, Just to FYI. I said, why do so you believe, believe that any gods God. exist? Okay. So, like I said, uh, do some research. I'm, uh, I'm asking you. At, yes, I did some research. That's what I'm telling you. Right, it's so just, I could uh, go and Google God and come up with 50,000 different yes. answers. So, I'd like to know why you believe what you believe. So I'd like to know, mm -hmm. not what Google tells me, not what other people tell me, I'd like to know directly from you, Chat. why do you believe mm -hmm. that any gods exist? Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's not uh, black or white, you know. Yes, the, it kind of is. Do they exist? Exactly the, are you saying they don't exist? No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is there is a possibility that those gods that they were... Uh, mentioning existed. There is a possibility, yes. Or, so is there a yes, possibility yes. that Peter Pan could exist? <laughs> it's cute I'm, actually, I'm actually being very serious right now. Like I said, it's, you, you just got to do some research. And you, so can you answer it. my question, please? What, what? Okay, can, can, can you, can you uh, do me a favor and just do some research and uh, did, you, did you do it? I've been trying. I've been doing research this in, for months, years. I mean, I've been doing research. That's why I've decided to get down to the okay. point and figure out why do you believe okay. that any gods exist? Mm -hmm. And if you say it's possible, well, I'm going to say, okay, well, I found that it's possible that Peter Pan could exist. But, okay, so, but uh, after deciding that I wanted that to be true and doing a little bit of research, I found that I had no reason to believe that he does, but I can't prove that he doesn't, so I'm not going to go there. So why do you? Okay, so l let me ask you this. A thousand years ago, uh, if, let's say, now we can identify smell, right? Uh, we can identify it scientifically. We can, we can, we can uh, look for... Um, for 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 uh, and how to identify it, uh, Wait, but before smell? ten thousand years ago, if you have a smell, a smell, whatever a smell, a snail, is, snail, yeah. snail. I thought you were talking no, about the snail, olfactory sense. No, no. I don't know what that has to do with God or well, any well, God. Hold on, it might be an example. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't you make a point? I'm trying to make a point. I'm sorry. So, uh, so 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 you smell something, right? You smell perfume. You smell oh, part, smell. whatever it is that you smell, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, so, so then, uh, now you could prove, right, uh, in this era with science, you could prove that that smell exists, correct? Hmm. I mean, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That, that we, we've we've been. You could prove able that to... a smell exists by sampling and asking other people, "Hey, do you smell something? Do you smell something? Mm -hmm. Do you smell something?" We, but we know that the we can it, test it. Yeah, existence of part of particles in the air. But um, can I prove that I'm smelling the, the same thing that Eric is smelling? Well, maybe. Uh, that's kind of a that's different, a different. That's that's a different rabbit hole that we. I'd rather not go down if we don't have okay, to. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> but Chad, go on. Okay. So we 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 can prove that things are smelly. Because they're smelly smells, and okay. we test them, and we can Great. find the existence Great. of the particulates that, 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 that are creating uh -huh. the smelly smell, and we can test for the existence okay. of that particulate matter. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we take a group of people, let's say 10 people, and they smell, and they describe how, what they smell, and they could, uh, you know, they can, they can describe it, you know, musty or, or smell, good, smell, uh, smells good or not. And all those type of things. And then you have a scientist that comes in and analyzes the particles and confirms that the smell is this or this or that, that based on pattern and based on what they find in the air, let's say. Okay. 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 This, is, this is today. So if we go back a thousand years from now and you have a group of people, 10 people, let's say, smelling the same thing, 
they could say, they could, pull, could point out, could agree, uh, or, or nine of them could agree that, yes, that they, they smell something. But there's no science that backs this up. They could not prove it, okay. can they, a thousand years ago. Well, so I, I go on. What, what's your point here? Okay, the point is the smell exists whether or not the science confirms it. So how do you know Correct? that the smell didn't stop existing? Well, well and, and, and even even there, I, I, I kind of see where he's, where he's going. Um, you can get in your car, Jenna, and not know how your car works, but be able to drive it here. But if I wanted to know how it worked, then I could find out. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying is this is something that's that I want story, to know, though. and I can't find out. I can't find, I can find pieces of my car to figure out how my car works. And you can also go to okay. where it can get shown to right. you. you. I can, can learn about it. So how can we learn about the existence of your God, Chad? And I'm saying you because I really don't it's give not a shit. my God. Please okay. don't, call it, don't call it my God. Do you it's have God. any gods? Okay. I don't worship any it's gods. It's a thug. It's a whatever, whatever you guys call Sorry it. Sorry about it's that. It's a thug to me. It's a immoral, uh, you know, immoral Any, God, any whatever, gods. Whatever it is. Okay, okay. so you think okay. that, you, you think that okay. gods exist and they're assholes? You don't? Well, well, there's a possibility they do exist in that way. And, uh, and you know, if, if let's say, take the Bible, and I shouldn't take the Bible as face value. I, I would never do that. And I never believed in, in any religion, by the way, just okay. FYI. But, but what I'm saying is the, possi the possibility of this thug, God, exists, okay? Or okay. Gods. How do you know? And there... Well, well, but why? Like I, said, why? I, 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 I didn't finish my, my train of thought with the example I used. Okay, okay so, okay. so you're, you're talking about uh, smells. Uh, they didn't okay. know how smell worked, but they could right. agree that a smell was right. there. Keep going. Correct. So, so now, let's take their religion as, you know, millions of billions of people uh, talk about quote-unquote proof or the, the Holy Spirit was with them or whatever it is, right? And we could dismiss all those people, right? And we say, you're insane, okay? What you were taught when you were young from your parents, now you just, uh, you're repeating that. So, so we dismiss it and we say, no, I'm not going to believe in whatever you're saying, right? But what I'm saying is from, that, from the sample of the 10 people, you got nine people that saying, oh, you know, perhaps... There is something there, and uh, I feel the spirit. I feel this and this and this and that, okay? And, and more and more people. Are we talking about billions and billions of people? Do you think those billions of people, they just, they, most hey, of them so probably, Chad, they're just following. Yes, go for it. You keep talking about how many billions of people believe this. Do you think that that has any bearing on whether or not it's true? No, I, I'm not saying that at all. Okay, right? well, and how about, and how about the this? So, would you agree, so Chad? An analogy. And would would yeah. would, would you agree that in uh, that that there are holy text uh, texts that have mm -hmm. described things that we know and have well documented as mental illness? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Then I think we found an example that works very well within your framework. <laughs> um, is there no, anything else? That, yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, no, I mean, just, uh, just like I said, uh, I, okay. I wish, you know, you guys just, uh, just consider, uh, um, we are and just keep to... looking for the evidence and call us back when you got it. Yep. Oh, and... I, I've been looking since I was four years old, you know, Okay, well, find, uh, when I'm you find gonna... it, let us know. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're amazing. <laughs> you are too. This is fun. Alex in Hi, Alex. Iowa. Hi. Hi. Hello. You're talking to Eric and Jenna. Hello. So, what can you, you hear us? I can. Can you? Yes. Yes, you were coming in a little low, but I think you're fine now. What would you like to talk about today? Hi. Um, well, actually, I just kind of wanted to talk about the relationship between kind of the atheist, skeptical, scientific community and the religious uh community cool um okay. which is yeah um which is a community i i kind of feel like i'm a person that lives in both of those worlds mm -hmm. How so? um, uh you know i'm a religious person and i have been all my life um at the same time 
I also, you know, am a real follower of, of science and believe in scientific literacy and, and critical thinking. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and, you know, okay. uh, amazed at some of the, and amazed at some of the things that people believe and read off the internet. <laughs> and it's like, oh, come on, please. Don't why, do that. No. Exactly. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I just, in the past, you know, five to 10 years, that that relationship just seems to have just blown up mm-hmm. and become a lot more contentious. And I was like thinking through why. And I think a lot of the blame for that falls a lot more on the theist Christian side mm-hmm. than it does the other side. So what do you um, believe? Um, about the, about the, the relationship or, or my religious beliefs. What are your religious beliefs? Well, well, uh, d- before we dive right into it, it sounded like he was going to make a point about the relationships between. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I did exactly. not mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and like I said, it's just, I, I think a lot of that falls on the theist side just because, um, you know, mm-hmm as a whole, or maybe not as a whole, but the loudest members of that community um, have not done a very good job at promoting scientific literacy. Uh, In fact, they've done their best to suppress it. Mm -hmm. Um, Hey, Alan? We have, have, yes. I just wanted to tell you, um, I'm taking a look at the live chat and... Uh There, everybody's rooting for you. It sounds like you're a little nervous. Take a breath. It's okay. Everyone here is oh. happy that you've called in. And the comments that I'm getting are, dude, it's okay. Take a breath. You're good. We're happy. We're good. Thank you. I promise. You. Yeah, I've never like really uh, called. You're... Well, thank you. I've never really <laughs> called into anything like this before. So. You're, you're hey, doing well. Um, yeah. So no, no, no sweat. We're not, we're not mean. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, try not to be. We try not to be. But... Right. Yeah. So you were saying that um, I'm sorry that I cut you off, but you, you, it, it sounds it sounded to me like you were saying that there's this contentious relationship between Christians and atheists or religious people and atheists. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing more yeah. um, fault kind of on the religious side because they're not really promoting uh, scientific skepticism and uh, promoting, you know, the tools that cause people to explore the universe around them. And that's kind of the right. last that I got from what you were saying. Yeah. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we also have not done a very good job at at living out the ideals that we're um, supposed to live out. We haven't done a good job at ensuring that people uh, who are in need are cared for. Well, the re- um, and we haven't done a good job at kind of, you know, minding our own business and taking care of ourselves first. And... Um, so so the, the reason that I had asked you. so early what your beliefs were was because it kind of sounds like you're going somewhere mm-hmm. and it's like when you say something like we're not acting the way that we're supposed to I wonder why you say that I wonder how are we supposed to act Yeah, we're, we're, and we're, that's mm-hmm. why I was like well what do you believe because I, I, I'm just trying to kind of get where you're coming from yeah sure you know I uh, give, give us give us some I, meat to chew in yeah. to. Uh, you, you, sure. you, you, you've set up the stage. Mm-hmm. We're ready. Now we're ready to engage with you. Yeah. As I've spent more time um, and doing more digging into what it actually meant to be a religious person and, and specifically for my religion, um, it meant, you know, trying to actually live out um, what the Bible says you're supposed to do. Um, There's, uh, I can't remember who it is, but there's uh, uh, Rob Bell, I think his name is, um, had a teaching that that basically said that some of the uh, original Jews, they would find uh, a rabbi and uh, they would follow him and their job was to do their best to 
uh, be like their their rabbi too. And so the application is that we're really supposed to, as Christians, just do our best to live the way Christ would. Okay. And it, I, this is starting to sound for the like, most part, Alex. This is starting to sound yeah. like a sermon. We're we're we're, we're, we're uh, wanting, and sorry. We're wanting to engage with you, but you're not asking us any questions uh, or giving us any statements that we can bounce back with you. Um, oh, sorry. you got to help here. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous. Anyway, my my whole point is just that um, that's that's what I try to do. You know, like I try not to. Um, mix politics with religion, that sort of thing, just because that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do. Um, so those are kind of my personal beliefs that it's like, I should really be minding my own business. I should be, um, uh, doing my best to take care of the people around me just because that's what I believe he would have done. And I don't see, um, the church in America, especially doing that, what so, I see is is a lot of I, argumentative behavior. Right, and you're you're completely right, and it's frustrating. And what th- th- this is just starting to sound like a like you're wondering if you're doing the right thing or or are talking about a thing. This might not be the right platform or show for this kind of conversation. This well, is more of something. Yeah, we can but get real quick, with real, each other. real quick before before mm-hmm. we change. Well, when I think about what I'm supposed to do, what am I supposed to do, and how I mm-hmm. used to think about it, and how I think about it now, and I, I used to be a Catholic, I used to think about mm-hmm. well, who am I going to ask to tell me what I'm supposed to do, and so I'm spending my entire life seeking out other people that are supposed to be the perfect example of what I'm supposed to be. And I found out that I'm not going to find that because there is no perfect person. There is no perfect example of who I'm supposed to be. I have to find that out myself. So when I think about anything that I'm supposed to do when it comes to anything, like, for example, minding your own business, I'm not exactly minding my own business right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm reaching out to people and I'm help trying to help people. I'm trying to have conversations. I'm trying to influence change. I'm not exactly minding my own business. Is minding your own business necessarily the only way to be? Well, sometimes, yeah, and sometimes, no. It just kind of depends. So it's up to you, ultimately, to decide what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, is that helpful? I guess if there's... It is. Yeah, I guess if there's uh, a question that I would uh, pose to the two of you, then uh, mm-hmm. is is the the conversation has turned. It seems to me less from a question of does God exist or does God not exist to to a bunch of people on both sides just trying to like shout each other down and 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 force each each other to convert one way or the other and it seems to me that that as long as everybody was just you know people could would kind of go to their churches and, and believe what they wanted to believe and not oppress anybody with their beliefs and yeah. people that didn't believe anything could not believe anything and that was fine and yeah, but, but now, now we now racist uncle bill that you only had to deal with two twice a year for the holidays uh has mm-hmm. the internet and has been let right. loose on the world and everybody's mm-hmm. crazy uncle bill mm-hmm. and racist uncle bill is and it's it's terrifying like i <laughs> i totally right. i totally get it i i, I so, think the best way to approach that though is to recognize that toxicity's been there we're just mm-hmm. learning as a society how to deal with it now that we can't turn our heads away and ignore it and that's why we're here on this mm-hmm. show and trying to have these calm respectful conversations is because we're sick of it too totally man mm-hmm. So, we want to talk. Gotcha. So, how about how about on your end, you promote that. On our end, we'll promote it, yeah. and we'll try and uh, make this world a better place from both sides. That makes sense. Do you cool. think there's still a place where both of those people can go back to coexisting peacefully? It depends, person to person. I think. But I really fucking hope so. <laughs> I mean, we have we've got a lot of work to do, and we have to share this world together. 
Um, mm-hmm. We can't agree on every last thing before we're ready to be neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, we can disagree sure. on things. Here's the difference. The difference is um, there are organizations, and I think you and I would probably agree that we can take a look at um, horrible, what, what, what did uh, the scathing atheist call them? Rape cabal, the Catholic Church. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that um, they, there, there are organizations that are actively um, hiding child predators. Right. And preventing mm-hmm. them from coming to justice. Right. We have organizations where um, there are these there are these pastors that are standing up and saying, oh, I can heal you if you give me all of your money. There are people who are taking advantage of, of you know, people who are on a fixed income. Uh, the, the poorest among us are being taken advantage of by prosperity gospel crud. And um, while we do have to live and work together, when we see injustice, when we see hate being espoused, doesn't matter where it comes from, right? If we see someone taking advantage of people that we should be caring for, we're going to stand up. Mm-hmm. We're going to be the change that we want to see yeah. in the world. And you can do it Absolutely. too. Absolutely. I think, I think that's all any of us can do. Yeah. Well, we Better hope so. on the same page. All right. That's, I, I think that's a good place to end it, man. Call back Thank you. sometime. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. That was upbeat. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Yeah. So uh, right now, um, we're, we're talking about this. We're talking about make the, making the world a better place. And yet right now in Orlando, Florida, mm. uh, there's a hate conference going on. And um, it's, it's heartening to see the amount of people who are standing up and going, this is wrong. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it does hurt to see that hate, but it's not new. We just aren't able to close our eyes to it anymore. And so, it but hey, we... the more we talk about it, the more it motivates people. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. That's how I got motivated to talk about this stuff. Is yeah. I don't know. All right. Um, so, just for my own funsies, um, I really want to talk to Slim okay. in California. What's up, Slim? Hey, Slim. Hey, how are, how are you? you doing? Oh, I, I didn't know I, I didn't know I was gonna be on this this soon. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw your topic and it just piqued my interest. What would you like to okay. talk about today? Yeah, uh, so I I am a Christian uh-huh. and I believe uh, the Bible is the Word of God, and I believe God gave us two unchangeable laws: the natural laws, which correspond with. Uh, true science, objective uh, reality, and uh, rationality. And he's also given us spiritual laws which deal with uh, morality and absolute truth. And individuals have to decide whether they want to reject or accept those uh, laws or rules. And I believe too also in Jesus, he never forced anyone to accept the truth, he expressed it. Those that wanted to hear it listened or sought after him. Okay. And those hey, that didn't. Mm-hmm. So, yes, go ahead. Let's, so you're, you're throwing out a lot of stuff, and it's all really good, and okay. I really appreciate you being okay. so honest. Um, you're just throwing a lot. And so can, is there any way that we can kind of summarize why you believe in a Christian God? Otherwise, I'm going to start zooming in on what you've already said. Yeah, so we can go a lot oh, of different okay. directions. So okay. do you want to yeah. try to summarize it and condense it down to which direction you want to go? Or would you rather me well, zoom in on what you already said? Uh, I, I, I guess I want to uh, talk about... Uh, Mainly, I guess the uh, the uh, Cambrian uh, explosion, uh, where there are no tradi- tra- transitional forms, and w- I'm wondering how is that possible? If it's based, if if uh, evolution is based this on science, uh-huh. why isn't there why isn't there any Slam? strong examples of of okay. that? To show. I got you, Slim. I am okay. so proud to tell you that that information uh-huh. has changed a lot in the last 50 years because mm-hmm. 
-hmm. honestly, the idea of transitional fossils not being a thing has been debunked and we've found transitional fossils and we found more transitional fossils. And then we found transitional fossils between those transitional fossils. And then we went, you know what? Uh, if this is true and we evolved in this direction, then we should be able to find evidence of this transitional fossil here, predicted it, and then found it. So um, there are a ton of places you can go, but the first place I would go is a university okay. um, because you can actually learn it. There are people who dedicate their lives to it. Um, there are, and honestly, dude, if that wasn't true, do you know how big the conspiracy would have to be? My goodness. Yeah. Most of us would be in on it, right? Oh, yeah, well, or, or, or we would accept it because, or, or we would accept, and, and I, 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 that's why I got some pencils and papers so I can write down whatever information you can share with me regarding cool. that, and I will... I will look in, into that. So, uh, so then while well, we I'm, talk, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the live chat to start linking and sending in some good places that we can send Slim. Okay. And yeah. the first person okay. is saying that you need to look up the fossil called Tiktaalik. T-I-K-T-A-A-L-I-K. E-I-K. T-A-A. T-A-A. L-I-K. Tiktaalik. L-I-K, L-I-K, okay. Go on to TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's online, go online. Yeah, it's, okay. it, you can also okay. go to talkorigins.com. Talk Origins. That's my favorite one. Dot com. Because that can give you a lot more okay. than just one example. That'll give you a lot of origins. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, also, check out r and Raw. Um, yeah. Aaron Ra has got a ton of videos on that. And, he gets pumped about it. And when it comes to evolution specifically, um, he's got a lot. What's his of, name? Aaron Ra. A R O N R A. A R O N O A. R A. So Aaron, A R O N, and then Ra. R A. R -A. Yep. Okay. He's, he's because there have been paleontologists and stuff uh, probably dating back about 30, 40 years uh, that also either evolutionists have uh, made comments also about uh, nothing really uh, existing in that regard. So, yeah. you, you, and, and when you ask how that was possible, uh, uh, conspiracy, I said, no, no, we, we, we respect uh, people we look up to. And that's sure. whether people are in the church or outside the church. If we respect people, they can tell us things because they have intelligence, knowledge. They've been to the best of schools. They have degrees behind their name. Uh, some of them are insincere. They manipulate whether they're in the church or out of the church and abuse their authority. So they can convince a large variety of people. We can look at history well, and I, see that has happened. I, I am proud to say, Slim, that... Um if that were, so n number one, if that were the case, then it would not make sense for people, you know, on completely, in completely different countries that didn't like each other with those same kinds of degrees to be making up the same lies. Um, this is, this is not only across one field, there are tons and tons of sciences that are dedicated to just this in different places and areas that have predicted a bit, predictive ability across fields. Um, I, I'm proud to tell you that your information is way out of date, um, but that's good. It means you get I'll look, I'll, you get to learn about it. Yeah. Um, other people in the live chat have said that you've got to check out Berkeley University's website. Uh, that's come up a ton. Um, also, let's see. Berkeley. We, mm -hmm. And can you would you know like a couple of names of the uh, actual? It's it's it, it, transitional forms. Well, uh, Tectolic is one of them, um, but Berkeley's biology website, okay. um, and we'll go from there. Um, I really hope you look okay. it up. And I'll, I here, here's I'll, the thing. I'll look it up. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't think either of us have a relevant degree. So when it comes to going in deep. Um, we may not be the resource, but if you want to talk about more surface level stuff or about philosophical arguments or things like that, I highly urge you to call uh -huh. back. And regardless, 
I'd love to okay. find out what you found out. Let us know. Report okay. back. Yeah. See what uh, you think. Yeah. Give me, give me, uh, give me, give me a, a little uh, couple weeks or so, and, and I'll, uh, I'll probably uh, check back in with you guys yeah, on what, uh, what I looked up. Sounds cool. good, man. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for uh, allowing me a little time on the air. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Bye. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Yeah. This is a good day so far. I know, right? <laughs> I, you know, I, he said there are no transitional fossils. I saw that. I was like, oh my goodness, we're going to have a fight. <laughs> and then we're just like, okay, here's more information. He, He's like, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's great. That's all we're asking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. Let's, let's go to Dave in Missouri. Hi, Dave. Hello. Hello. Hey, you're talking to Eric and Jenna. What would you like to talk about today? Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, I just listened to that last conversation you had, and I'm curious when you were talking about your um, the transitional bones. When these bones were discovered, did they come with instructions, or how do you know that these are actual human transitional bones? I mean, was there any any kind of writings from that time period saying that these were transitional figures or, I mean, I'm just curious how you accept 100% oh, oh, accept oh, well, that these bones are transitional bones so, because I don't. So Adrian, or that, not Adrian. That, Dave. One, that one gets me, you know, it's just a bone that was found in the ground. How do you Dave? know it wasn't a, you know, Dave monkey. Dave. Yeah, buddy. I didn't know if I was on mute. You were kept talking. And I kept trying to jump in. Why are you putting words in my mouth? I didn't say I believe with oh, absolute just, certainty you know, anything. Not words in your mouth. You you were talking about your your transitional bones, the yeah. tectonic or whatever bone. And you, you said that I believe one hundred percent a thing. I do not believe one hundred percent that I exist. I couldn't prove to you. So why the hell would okay. I say that about anything else? Because you just said with your last guy you had a conversation with, you thought you guys were going to get into an argument there for a minute. So it made it sound to me like you were a big believer in the theory of evolution. Is that, am I correct or am I wrong? So in the same way that I believe that gravity and germ theory exist, there is... Yeah, whatever. Do you oh. not think that germs exist? Oh, I know they exist. Do you exist. not believe in gravity? Absolutely believe in So it. then what do you mean, yeah, whatever? That's very your, dismissive, Dan. Your position, your position, I've been listening to your program What's our position? Your position, your atheist position. What's our position? Your position is that there is no God. No, it's not. That is your position. But no I've one never said that. There's, yeah. that. there's not enough proof. I've never said that. No, hold on. That there's not enough proof. He's. Right. But I've never said that there is no God. So I'm not. I'm not. No one's proof. giving you the proof, right? Well, it's, he's. I, I thought he was revising. Um, so were you revising to say instead of us saying there is no God, you're saying that we're saying there's not enough proof? I think that's that's what I gather from what I've heard from all your conversations and debates that I've listened to is that your main the main contention is that there's there's not enough proof to any of you that that there's a God. No right. matter what anyone presents to you in the way of archaeological evidence or a biblical or a testimonial evidence of any sort from the time period from a couple thousand years ago. Right. It yeah. just seems like you completely dis you do not, you will not acknowledge or, or the relevance of any testimonial evidence other than what's at a university somewhere that uh, that you, for whatever reason, makes sense to you. But But anything from 2,000 plus years ago it's like, it's it's a like you said earlier. It's a Spider-Man book that was buried in the ground, and then someone dug it up. Well, and so, that just blows my mind that, that that your rationale, that your reasoning, your inference reasoning, is in that infantile state. I mean, I I want to make sure I'm talking with somebody that's intelligent enough to grasp what I'm about to say. Oh, oh thank you okay. so much. Yeah, so that's really You're condescending. Um, Dave, well, okay. then I'm not sure uh, that okay. we... Very much so. No, I've got this. Okay. Hi, Dave. Yeah, come on, buddy. All right. So here, here's, here's how we're going to start this. Uh, if you're going to name call, yeah. uh, you can exit the show. 
Um, we're going to talk to each other respectfully and kindly. If uh, we raise our voices, I understand it can get heated, but we're going to do our best to have a very productive conversation here. Does that sound good to you, Dave? Sounds great. I haven't name called anybody. You called, you you're said... Insulted by my, you're insulted by my observation of your show. No, that's, but we're going to continue. So man, here's how we're going to start. Um, so, oh, geez, I don't even know where to begin. Jenna, where, where do I begin on this? Do you want to know what we think about anything? Uh, that's a good I've start. got a good idea about what you think about on the subject of there being God or no God. That's really the whole platform here is that okay. conversation. Th there's, there's. And as far as that's concerned, I don't think you guys have the the, the, the information. Okay. I, I just you just don't have it. Right. Well, that's what we're asking for. Yeah. That, that's why we have a show open to be able to talk about it. So we're we're we're, we're, we're hosting a show that's asking for information. Yeah, and do you and, realize that? And do you also realize that we're providing. So, so resources. Yeah. So, so the, the example of Spider-Man in the comic book, right? Do you know why I provided that example? Let's start there. I can't read your mind. No. Huh? Okay. Cool. Well, that means that I was doing a bad job communicating. So let me try again because I'd like to communicate that. Right. Um, we we use the best tools at our disposal. We use the best tools we have to understand the world around us, right? Our, our, our mental tools, our epistemological toolbox, right? Right. And we use those tools to decipher, you know, uh, everything. When, when you hear something from somebody, what you're doing is you're reaching back in your mind to any experiences that you had that, that involve you interacting in that way and that informs your choices in the future. But there are some times when we learn poorly how to determine what's true and what's not true. Um, an example being, all of my friends did it, therefore it has to be the right thing, right? That's something that, sure. that's something that happens and, and we're like, right. oh, Fear that, you, you know. behavior, I get it. Right, and so, um, well, it's not just learned behavior, it's learned thinking. Right, and so when this, when the caller called up and said we had these ancient texts, what I was doing is I was giving an example, not because I, I want to be an asshole or anything like that, but, but that was the best example that I could think of that used the exact type of reasoning he was using because he was saying it was dug up, it was really old, and therefore it was true. And I thought, you know what? Right. Let me give an example like that. Let's say I buried a Spider-Man comic for a thousand years. Right. We dug up. Would that mean it was, a, it, it it was true? It was a bit of a dramatic example, but it was... Well, actually, I, 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 I follow you. Actually, it's not even a dramatic example. I like using Spider-Man because it happens in New York. Because people will say, oh, well, we can look in the Bible and these places existed and they were true. And so I can, in this example, say, well, New York exists. Yeah. It, it's actually not an asshole example. It, it's, a, it's a pretty damn good one just for these purposes. So I'm not trying to be a jerk. What I'm actually trying to do is point out the flaw in thinking. And, okay. I, and I'm not even trying to say that I have all the answers. What I want to do, though, is push us as a society forward so that we can use the best tools we have at our disposal to learn the most about the world that we can. And as long as you and I are going at that together, we're not going to have a problem. Then can we agree on this? Sure. We what's agree up? On the tools, the, the tools that you're just mentioning, our minds, right? Mm -hmm. One yeah. tool is our your mind, your ability to, you know, receive data and process data. But the other tools, and the only thing we really have at our disposal, technically, is what's on this earth. Either mm -hmm. archaeological evidence, uh, testimonial evidence, from no matter if it's from 50 years ago or 5,000 years ago, we oh. we either have something that was written on stone or so written thing in that, a book or oh. or testim or we have archaeological evidence, and that's really all we've got. Almost, I've got one extra thing for you. Almost, the, the most the, I've never heard anybody on your program ever bring this to light, and I. Well, that's the main reason I called and sat on hold for half an hour. If, if it's the thing that I want to piggyback on, perfect. If it's not, then I just want to jump in really quick. Jump in. Sure. Yeah. Logic. Okay, logic is fine. Right. So if we're talking I about... Like logic, okay. If we're talking about abstract concepts like the number one um, or what multiplication is 
or how we, you know, determine pi and, and, and all of those. Those are abstract concepts that don't exist in the world that we observe, but they're concepts that we have created to describe something to each other and better understand the world. So you're saying we have nothing but, you know, everything that we see at our disposal, and I'm saying that let's also add in abstract concepts because this communication that we have is not all just in writing to each other, that we're able to communicate to each other and understand concepts uh, d to be able to, to do that. So I just wanted to add that in. I, I appreciate that, and uh, I appreciate it. And earlier, if I came across being very arrogant and condescending, I apologize for that. Thank you so much. I, I just want to put this out here to you. You guys can take this information, discard it, or hopefully research it. Yeah. Um, I mean, do a legitimate research on it, not just swipe right with your thumb on your <laughs> cell phone. I mean, do, do some actual sure. research. Mm -hmm. So, so and, I, I'll tell you, Dave. If you, do, uh, if you do, I believe that you'll, well, hopefully um, that will lead you to further research that sure. I believe would be be good for you. And but then anyway, do it again because research let, let, changes. And, and, and but th th there are a couple things that I, I really want to share with you because it would feel disingenuous to say yes, right? Um, the first, right. and you've probably had this happen to you, um, is people will send us research and books uh -huh. that are thousands right. and thousands of pages long that they didn't look at themselves. And, right. and, I know and, that's right. Yeah, right. You get that gift from somebody and it's like, oh, you could use this book. Mm -hmm. And it's like, did you read it? No. I, I mean, yeah. it is so, and it, it, it bites because I'll come back a week later with, with big old bags under my eyes and, and jittery from the coffee. And I'd be like, I read all of it. I have synthesized all of this information and I want to talk about it. And the person who gave it to right. me is like, I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. I actually didn't read right. that crap. So, so long as we both agree that we need to both do the research because right. otherwise it's just not fair, man. I get so much. Yeah, no, I won't. I won't. I won't uh, put you. Through, I'm not trying to put you through that. I'm just trying to say that the information that I'm going to present to you, if you want to research what I say, I sure hope that you will. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so what would you like to, yeah. us to research? Okay. Well, I'm going to take care of two issues. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. Okay. okay. I'm going to at least. This is my belief. I'm going to prove that there is a God, and I'm going to prove which God is the right one. You know, you've got the Muslims, you've got the Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, Jews. How can you know who's right? Dave? I mean, that's that's a conversation that will never be agreed upon in my lifetime, I promise you. No, if you're going to prove it, then obviously I, it would have to be agreed upon. I want him to upon. get to it. Yeah, if, if, if you can you prove to, to my I'm satisfaction ready. that God exists, I'll, I'll shave you, my I'll head on the air. Example. All right. You got it. I'll no, 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 you know, you're I'll best. You. I want you to prove it. You got it. Okay. I'm going to give you an example to make this for anybody that's listening. We're going to do this in a court of law, okay? With an American court of law. Okay, if, so if, wait, it, if it goes it? over my head, I'm going to throw a flag because I, I, yeah. I, I want to make sure that we're on the same page and it doesn't, you know, get into a weird spill. No, you're fine. Okay. I'm just saying, and we're going to make the, the, uh, the attorney asking the questions and the judge... They're both atheists or agnostic, whatever. You know, they don't believe one way or the other. They're not convinced. Okay. Okay. And we're going to march. Uh, we're just going to, for time's sake, we're just going to deal with the big three. We're just going to deal with the Muslim faith, the Christian faith, and the Jewish faith. Fair enough. Okay. So just for time's sake. Okay. So question. Yeah. yeah. What do we enter into evidence? Well, we're going to bring, we'll bring Muhammad in first. Let's do the, we'll, we'll okay. deal with the Muslim faith okay. first. And, we're, and, the, and the, whole, the whole gist of this thing in the courtroom is each person presenting their case, the Muslim or the Christian or the Jew, they need to prove to the judge that the God that they believe in is the true God to be, to be worshipped and, right. and his teachings to be adhered to, you know, and they need to come into the court of law and they need to prove that their God is the true God, the mm -hmm. creator of all humanity. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Um, that's, that's their task in the courtroom. They need to prove this. So where, I, what's in evidence? I, I agree that God evidence needs to be proven guilty of existence. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 
So, I'm so, going to show you the evidence right well, here. Well, well, well hold you, on. Because it won't take but just a couple minutes with, with the Muslim faith. I can do it in about two minutes. Well, hold on. We're, what I'm asking about entering things into evidence is what uh -huh. physical evidence. So are we allowing three holy books in? Are we allowing... Um, uh, a cross or an yeah, ale different or different witnesses. Or... Well, but, what well, do we require for a witness? It's going to be different. The Muslim, the Muslim faith has nothing more than testimonial evidence. Okay, not well. Let me think. Wait, no. Wait, that can you repeat what you just said? They have in, in the court of law. They're going to bring into the courtroom with them testimonial evidence. Okay, so we have. That's, that's what they're bringing into the courtroom now. In in our world. You can go back in, into the Muslim faith when it began, and you can and you can bring archaeological evidence, you know, testimonial evidence, sure. you know, so, all this, all this other stuff. So let's but, let's but let's go of, through this together, Dave. If I were to bring a Muslim and ask them to go onto the stage and ask for testimonial evidence, then we need to determine whether or not that testimony is admissible in court. Has that exactly has that witness met their deity? <clears throat> No. Has that witness um, directly interacted with that deity? No. How is that different from hearsay? It's hearsay. They're out of court. I'm gonna, um, exactly. I'm going to show you that. Okay. And I like okay. I like the way you're thinking because right. you just hit you just hit on something that is so absolutely important to okay. this, and that's so, what I want to point out with me bringing forward. Uh, actually, I'm going to say let's let's bring Muhammad into the courtroom. Uh, no, um, Muhammad obviously gonna... can't be bothered because none of us have seen Muhammad. So Muhammad didn't show up. Uh, we're throwing out the case. Let's go to Christianity. This is where I'm excited um, because it's easy enough to pick on other people, but it changes when you bring up well, your own. Well, let me, let me do this for one before you move on to Christianity. That's the point I wanted to make about the Muslim faith. Okay. If Muhammad existed and he walked into this courtroom and he had his Quran. And the judge asked him to prove that that is the inspired word of God. And then he was to come back and say, yes, well, the angel Gabriel told me to write these things down, you know. And then the, the agnostic or atheist attorney would immediately stop and, you know, objection, hearsay, you know, says you. Well, and, and, you I, know, what is your, what's, your, what's your evidence? And then Muhammad actually might get angry and stand up and, you know, he might stand up and shake the Quran at that attorney and say, hey, look, here's my evidence. Here's the Quran. Well, no, Dave. objection, hearsay. Dave. That's objection hearsay. You wrote that. Dave, you got to take a step back because your judge has just inferred that that God exists. The who? <laughs> so you, in the your example... inferred that, that that God exists? Yeah, so if it, you're in, in your example, you said the judge says you need to prove that that is the inspired word of God, right? Right. 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 That, That's assuming that there is yeah, one. Yeah, that, 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 that brings in a whole bunch of crap that has not been adequately... That is not a question that a judge can use. The question is, is okay, so does a God exist? Prove that there's a God. Prove that there's a God. Sure, we'll right. do that. And okay. then, so let's go on to the Christian. Let's, okay. let's, but first, let's understand the, the Muslim faith. Why? Written why? By one man. Yeah, I, I kind of want to go because, straight to you. Because these are... Why? Because there are... How many wars have been fought? Because well, what's of the, the difference? Faith, like, why Christian are we going faith? with Muslim instead of Christian? Yeah, why the, does it matter? So the We're thing going is... To Christian is next. I well, have no problem going to Christian next. Let me do my little shmuel, okay. and you will understand the point I'm trying to make to prove all of this to you. Okay, can, can, uh, okay. We, can, we, can we just kind of yeah. get to don't, the point then? Just because yeah, just we, we're kind of going on and on and on. We still got more callers, so can can we just kind of get that's to why, the point? That's why I was trying. I could have done made my point. If, okay, go know, ahead. Just go let, ahead. let me get to this. But the point I'm trying to make that as an atheist, the Muslim faith does not prove to any atheist that there is a God. Are we? Can we agree on that? There is not enough evidence in the Muslim faith for a God, no. For me. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. And you, sir? Yeah, I, I have not been um, I have not been convinced that the Muslim God exists. Right, because it's basically just a bunch of comic books that we dug up and and no. that's their writings and they believe in them. Well, it's that, that they, they, it could evidence. be, and who knows? Uh, yeah, there, there are tons. Right, exactly. Who knows? Right, who knows? Right. There are a ton right, of reasons. Right. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not just that. Okay. It's not just that. There okay, are a ton of reasons. Well, let's go, to the, let's go to the Christian faith. Okay. I'm excited. Let's march me up in front of the judge, and he's telling me to prove that that 
that there's a God and that that is the book of my professed God. I have to prove this. Okay, so are you allowed uh, to take the stand, Dave? Yeah, absolutely, Why? yes. How is this not hearsay? Well, he's asking me. He is asking me to prove that there's a God and to present my evidence. Right, so, so first off... Um, you're not the lawyer in this example. You're the no. you're, you're you're providing testimony, and testimony needs to be not hearsay. So how are you not right. presenting hearsay? I'm about ready to show that to you if you'll let me let me finish it here. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to do the same in the beginning. I'm going to do the very same thing that the Muslim did. No, Dave. No, 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 no. No. I have no choice. This is this is what we have on the earth. This is the, these are the archaeological and, and testimonial evidential evidence that we have on no, earth. No, Dave. What I'm saying is, it Should sounds like you're going from a script, a and I don't want to hear someone I'm tell not a story. Going from a script. Then, I have no paperwork in front of me. Then, dude. A, then answer me, and don't just say no. I'm not going to answer your question. I'm trying Instead, to answer you, but you're shutting me off. I'm trying to present to you evidence, and you will not let me. Because I'm asking I'll you for specific I'll things. Do. I'm asking I'm you. you specific. Is the Bible specific enough for you? No, I, I, we Let's haven't even gotten there, there David. We, we will, I'm though. Trying to get there. We will, though, eventually, I'm yes. My first question, though, for you was, how are you able to provide testimony that's not... Um, hearsay. Hearsay. Read, as a witness. Have, not have, as you, I but have, as a witness in this court. Okay. As a witness in this court, I am presenting the evidence that just like any other attorney who defends a client wasn't there, but they had the evidence that they are presenting to Okay. So what is the evidence? The yeah, the, the, they the, weren't there, but they had the evidence. Then you're not a witness. So you're not taking the stand. You're the lawyer. Well, you, you categorize me however you want to categorize me. Well, no, no, no. It matters. I'm going to bring the stuff to you. I'm going to bring the facts to you. Do you okay. want to hear them or not? We just established the fact that you said you're a witness and then determined that you are not a witness, and then you got upset about it. Like I'm, I'm not upset about none of this, dude. You're not letting me cool. make. I okay. think you know where I'm going with this, but I don't think you. I don't think you're going to let me present this information on your broadcast. Well, I don't think you're going to let me do it. I'd let's, really like you to, but I've been waiting out. for how long now? Yeah, Mr. Lawyer, you want to hear it? Well, how, how, what are you entering into evidence? Okay. Do you guys agree that there's a Bible in this world? Yes. Do you, believe, do you agree? Okay. Do you know? How many books are in the Bible? No. There are 66 books in the Bible. Okay. 27 are in the New Testament. The rest are all found in the Old Testament. Why are we counting books? I'm trying to give you, you know, these are facts, okay? This is, these are facts. Yeah, but objection. why are we counting we books? Bible anyway. Objection, okay, relevant. I'm just trying to tell you that you're not talking to someone that hasn't done the research. Objection, How do you know relevant. what research I've done? <laughs> Hold on. Objection. I have Relevance. no idea, but I'm just trying to tell you that I, I'm trying to imply and press upon you and any of your listeners that okay. I'm not someone just... You two are messing up my court line. metaphor, <laughs> and I'm really having fun here. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how that No, works. yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I, I'd really like to go back to court. Dave, I'm objecting. <laughs> Relevance. What, You're talking about how many books are in the Bible, and I'm saying that I'm ob yes, I'm saying object. I object. What is the purpose of this? Otherwise, it is okay. irrelevant. Exactly. I, I, you're exactly right. My my books, my collection of sixty six books bound into one is no more impressive than the Book of Quran, except uh, for one thing that separates it. You know what? what separates it from the Book of Quran and every other book on this earth? What? What? Do you know what separates it? What? Over one-fourth of the Bible is prophecy. There are over 1,700 prophecies that were prophesied okay. in the Bible. Yeah. All um, of them have come to pass except for 50 of them. What? The that, uh, so, thousand in the wait, where are you part. getting have this you from? Ever well, hold on. It? Have you studied the prophecies? Yes, I Bible? have, Dave. Now, no, you haven't. Or if you were, if uh, whoa, you hold studied, on. Half of them. Did you just put, program, you know dude. what, man? If you're going to accuse me of shit that you have no idea about, I'm this conversation's not only over, but I'm going to hang up on your ass. It's over, don't dude. tell me. Done. I don't, yeah, you're done. Hung up on you. Listen, we, we followed your court metaphor. I went through with this. I was really excited. Then you went and became a jackass. Um, that's not how this works. If you wanted to go, I was willing to follow you. Jenna was willing to follow you. And then you didn't stick the landing. Look, 
if we want to talk about prophecy, that's absolutely fine. We can talk about prophecy. My go-to example is in the book of Eric. In the book of Eric, it says that 9-11 is going to happen. Jenna, would that be, if I just wrote right now that 9-11, you know, September 11th, 2001, two planes are going to fly into the World Trade Center in New York, um, would that be a, a, a fantastical thing for you to read? Oh my gosh, that prophecy. <laughs> no. Well, after the fact, no. No, of course not. Um, But when we're talking about this, we actually can't verify what was written after the fact. And some of them, we can verify that they were written after the fact. And because of that, they are not unique or Mm -hmm. special. And some of them are very, very broad. Um, they, they are more like Barnum statements and a Barnum statement is uh, something that will apply to everyone than uh, an actual clear cut thing. Like um, what? so, um, sorry guys, new at this, <laughs> n- n- no worries, no worries. So if you, if you look up like your, your star sign, mm-hmm. um, It'll say it'll say things about you. Oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna have, have a, a great day. week because you're. Oh, I see. Your friends Generalized like you. statements that can apply yeah. to everyone. Love is on the horizon. You know, whatever, whatever. There's gonna it be is. a change in your life. Yes. <laughs> Eventually, there will be a change, <laughs> right. and if you're not actually being specific. And then it fits, and yeah. it, it was talking to me, and I'm yeah. so special. And, and, uh, <laughs> and we, we can actually compare that against uh, one of my one of my favorite books. Um, I found out that it was on Amazon. Uh, they they turned it into a show. It's called Good Omens, <laughs> and it oh my gosh, it's so good. Neil Gaiman and Terry freaking Pratchett before he passed away wrote Aww. it, and uh, in this book there is an actual book of prophecy, and it is 100 percent specific. You, when you're reading it, it the, the, there's a part where it says your coffee is getting cold. And he looks and he's just like, <gasps> <gasps> like it, it is specific to the person yeah. at the time and no other time. And, 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 and it's just. That's cool. It's spot on. Yeah. Um, that's what we're looking for. And that's not what we get from the Bible. If you're going to think that that's amazing, I've got some property in the desert to sell you, buddy. Um, if not, you should expect better. Um, it's halfway through the show, so I want to thank those patrons because without you, we wouldn't be able to make this happen. Um, so before we hop into the next call, I would love to thank Neil Bradley, our top patron. Neil, we love you. Woo! Charlotte Crum, thank you so much. Desert Heathen. Yeah, Desert yeah. Heathen. I like that. Dr. Funkenstein and Nando Gonzalez, our top Yay. Five patrons, Neil, Charlotte, Desert Dog, Dr. Funkenstein, and Nando have all kicked in to help us keep the lights on, help keep this going, help us, you know, support organizations that are doing good work and spreading it, making other shows happen, bringing in people like you. It's freaking <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. We Thank don't you. have major patrons. It is your support, a dollar or two at a time. That's what keeps us going. And if even would, if you don't have any money, come by and stop by and help out. We need hands. We need help. We need volunteers, communication, yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff. So that even if you don't have the money, there's other stuff you can do. Yeah. Like uh, if you're local, next Saturday, this up, well, this upcoming Saturday, uh, we are going to be doing a project on the front patio. So that's on June 22nd. We're going to be out front and we need help. We're going to be, we're going to be, moving grass and, and putting down uh, rock and we just need people bring a shovel come and help um, if you're far away that's okay leave a like you know yeah. l- leave leave a good review on iTunes share. and Google Play and share this because the more it goes out the more people will get to see it and if you do want to support us that does help you never know what somebody needs to hear and if you just share this that somebody might hear that one conversation that just really helped them through something and you just never know so it I mean I it takes two seconds to share. <laughs> yeah, please, please do. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on. Oh my goodness. I, I almost want to do it just for the name. Uh, so I'm going to do it just for the name. Adrian! <laughs> You've probably heard that your entire life. I'm so sorry. You're talking to Eric and Jenna. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, that's the first time I've ever heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <No>. Adrian. <laughs> At least we're original. Nice. <laughs> uh, you, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just, just thank you. <laughs> Adrian, what would you like to talk about today, other than my absolute lack of creativity? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, wanted to talk about 
uh, what I believe and why. And cool. I, I spoke to you before the last time, Eric, I don't know if you remember talking to me. I uh, called in, gave the, uh, it's kind of like that, uh, that last caller, just not as, not as mean, but uh, like the, the court, courtroom analogy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just get the, uh, the evidence, though, is more scientific and, and uh, like the moon and uh, DNA and the tilt of the earth. Yeah, he went, he, went into, he went into prophecy, and then he was like, you don't do this. And I was like, whoa, dude, you don't know me at all. Like, ask yeah. me. You, you, I mean, wouldn't the honest thing be to, to ask, like, so that we're on the same page before just a kid? <laughs> that was rough. Yeah, it's probably Father's Day something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. E- even, even in my debate with David Wood, I stopped, and I was like, do you believe this? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Anyway, I'm talking shit about somebody who's not even on the air, and that's not a nice thing for me to do. Adrian, what would you like to talk about? Well, I apologize on behalf of, uh, you know, uh, believers out there for that last caller, but, yeah, uh, I just give the evidence, like the tilt of the earth and the plate tectonics and the the, uh, ozone layer and the magnetic field and the position of Jupiter, which protects us from... Uh, incoming asteroid strikes mm-hmm. and uh, there's just a lot of evidence that looks to be designed and I think you were saying that you know things can uh, nature can sometimes just give the appearance of design mm-hmm. and, and and not uh, even that some of them are a stretch so like if we want to talk about you know plate tectonics and and that kind of stuff um, that's just how physical things interact with each other that's just the the fact of our earth um, adding more yeah. onto that would actually require more evidence. So, you know, um, uh, uh, the example that I gave in the past I don't think was a good one because uh, it was about morality and it always devolved. So I'm going to try a different example, and that is gravity. Let's say um, you're, you're dropped onto this planet and uh, you let go of something and it falls to the ground, and you're like, okay, this is a thing that happens. When I drop something, it falls to the ground. Um, I don't know why it happens. I know that it happens, and now it's up to me to explore and find out why it happens, right? Right, right. And so we see these phenomena, such as the tilt of the earth, uh, the complexity of DNA, and all of these things that you just described, and we're, we're, we see that it happens, and now we're asking why it happens. And some of them, we've got some amazing explanations, and I'm sure you've looked it up, Right. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so, you don't act exactly need to know like why it happens. You just need to know like you know, uh, yeah. what know. are the possibilities of that? Totally. I don't need to know how my car works to be able to drive my car, mm-hmm. right? But it can be helpful when you need to work on it. Yeah, but 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 <laughs> it's 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 not like you had to sit me down and to show me how internal combustion right. engines work so that I'd be able to know understand how to drive a car. Well, but that's what I mean is to right, use that analogy to apply it to our own lives. I don't necessarily need to know how I'm functioning to function. Right, but but, but it's helpful. Or like <laughs> if you didn't know if you saw a car that like you, it didn't have the maker on it or who made it or anything like that, um, and you never this is your first time seeing a car. You could still make that determination that the the car was designed by somebody without uh, well, actually well, maybe, knowing. It, it, maybe it, not right away. If you've never seen a car before, maybe I mean it's it's not safe to jump to assumptions right away. I yeah. mean, give it a sec, look yeah. at it before you come to any conclusions. In, in this example, it right. would be as if I was dropped onto an alien planet and right. I saw like a mound of blurb. Right. And I and I don't know if somebody's going to get into that blurb and fly it away, mm-hmm. or if it's just always mm-hmm. been there. You know, <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily, but I really quickly want to just finish up the the point that I was making. I was kind of drawing a circle around this and that was, um, it sounds, I, I, I bet we could go in and you can describe how a lot of these forces and how a lot of the physics, uh, operates in our universe. Um, and it's a wonderful and exciting thing to do. And regardless of your conclusions, um, look into it because it's awesome. (laughs) Um, but I, th- there's a story that strikes me here, and um, I, I've heard that it was um, debunked, and I really, it breaks my heart, but it still is a good one, and it's the story of Laplace and Napoleon, and Laplace had uh, written a book that described how the heavenly bodies moved across the, the, the night sky, 
and the orbits of the planets, essentially, right, around the sun. And so you, you have Laplace, who was called in by Napoleon, um, because in all of these models and all of the, the math, um, you, you, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's incredibly intricate. And Napoleon calls him in and says, Laplace, this is, this is amazing, but where's God in your model? I'm looking at it and I, I, I see their orbits and I see how they're interacting with each other, but where's God? And Laplace famously says, God's not needed. Yeah, it works perfectly fine without it, right? Yeah. And then, um, yeah. But uh, so we kind of have to see where God is first to be able to, you know, do yeah. that. Otherwise, we've got the God of the gaps things. But you let me talk what a lot. Laplace forgot. Yeah. You know, what Laplace was forgetting though is that there's only two options, right? It's just God or no God. So that is one of the options is God. So uh, I mean, you. You, that, so is if, Peter Pan. If you don't know all your options, you 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 could make a wrong choice if so, you don't know so, what so all your options are. You're close. I I I'd love to correct that just a little bit because I know where you're going with this, and so just to help mm -hmm. you in the future, you have infinite options, but in the statement God or no God, that's a binary, right? So you have A, which is the statement a God exists. The negation yeah. of that statement. A creator god, a creator god. Remember, uh, I, I, we're not I mean, discussing any specific gods until after we've proven a creator god, because we, we may not even need to get into those other gods. We could save a whole lot of time, a whole lot of time, if we so, could just prove that there is no but, creator god. But I, I would argue that a creator god is a a subset of a god. Mm. Right, because then you you it's know a specific can, god. Can, yeah, can I define a god that's not a creator? So that, Right. A creator god is an option, yes, but also but, nature but, is an option too. Well, so we're so, about so, any so there's two it, options. It, well, n well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. What I'm saying is the negation is not a god exists. Um, so it's A or not A. Not A doesn't carry information. It's just the negation of the statement. And so when you're giving a binary, the you know it's either one thing or the other. Then if you want to really give that binary, it's going to be a God exists or not a God exists. Mm -hmm. um, right. But when you, what you said is you need to know all of your options. And when you do that, it's no longer a binary. Mm -hmm. We can come up with a whole bunch of wacky stuff. Um, well, there's only two options and yeah, you need to know those two options. Well, well th 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 that's why I'm helping. I'm trying to help your language here so that you, you I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm trying to help, but I'm trying to help. I, I, I want you to be the better person no matter where you go with it. <laughs> so there are hey, more than two hero, options. You're my hero. Ah, you need <laughs> way higher standards, Thank you. sir. <laughs> no, he's my hero too. Oh, no, I, I will say, I, I will say that I, I learned a lot of uh, logic and reason from watching these these uh, atheist shows. That's something that I I did not learn from uh, you know religion and and uh, and I I, I thank y'all for that and you know. I, um, and I thank God, really, for uh, logic and reason also. We've got to get there first. I would actually, I, 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 I agree with the former statement and not the latter. But you know um, what, keep, just keep thinking about why. Yeah, so, um, but, but anyway, the, the, the binary, I think, is something that I'd really like to leave you with because unfortunately we're getting low on time and I know we just had a whole bunch of fun and didn't get to the thing you wanted to talk about, and I'm sorry for that. I hope that you can call back and we can jump in. Um, but if there's anything that we can take away from this, it's that in logic, um, you have three laws, right? Identity, non-contradiction. I was going to end on my middle finger. I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> Excluded middle, right? And um, if, <clears throat> if we can do those things, then we can figure out a whole lot. Um, if you want to talk about other options, I'd be happy to. Um, it just may not be comfortable. It may not fit into the narrative that you're thinking. But... Call back, and I'd love to be able to have that conversation in two weeks. Or you can talk to Jamie next time. All right. Weekend. All right. Well, now you know why I believe and what I believe, and just wanted to let you know. Adrian. You're awesome. Way more than that. I want to dive into that head of yours and learn all about you. So call back, okay? All right. All right. Thank you for calling. Take care, brother. All right. God bless. Oh, come on. <laughs>
he didn't. He, Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? No, you know what? As nice as he was, I'm sure that that's just like reaction. It could be. I, in my mind, he said, God bless, and hung up and went, ooh, I bet you that was unconsidered. Okay. Oh, well. Nah, it's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> so we are getting short on time, but we have a whole bunch of callers, and I want to talk to all of them. So uh, stay on the line, everybody, because uh, we're going to run long this weekend. Um, who would you like to talk to? Uh, let's go with Tracy. All right. Tracy in Canada, America's hat. How are you doing? You're talking to Eric and Jenna. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Hello. Um, so I don't, I called like two weeks ago and talked to Eric and, um, oh, what was his name? Drew. Genetically Modified Skeptic. Drew, yeah. Yeah, yeah Drew. Yeah. So I anyways, like I have a question that will hopefully be quick, but it's not as emotional as a question as last time. Sure. So, um, Okay, so I know I said before I was raised um, fundamentalist, but about seven years ago, so I converted to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had a question specifically for Jenna because you said that you were, uh, you were formerly a Catholic. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that had drawn me to Catholicism when I converted was that they claimed that they had this um, unbroken line from... Uh, like from Peter all the way to the present day in the bishops and popes and that. Mm -hmm. um, when your deconversion, did you come across anything that kind of was able to contradict that or? Um, as far as a specific line, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd been told stuff like that my whole life about how Catholicism was the only religion that began and has never changed and is consistent and just always makes sense all the time over thousands of years and that you can trace it back all the way to Jesus. Um, I've never seen any evidence for it. Um, it took me probably 10 years of questioning to start loosening up the idea of a sky daddy. Um, but <laughs> help me out. Sure. Um, um, so I, I didn't. I didn't grow up Catholic. Um, I was baptized Catholic. Really. And um, what I learned about the Catholic Church that really blew my mind was that there were times that they got together and voted on the Bible to change it, and they've done that multiple times. And so you have the councils of Nicaea and the Council of Trent, um, where they decided what books go in and out and how it's translated. It was um, translated specifically for King James. Um, and uh, there were significant differences. There have been differences from those to the others. And so the claim that it's unchanged, like in the light of all of that evidence, I don't know how you could still make that claim. So what I was told was that those, it took that many people to determine accurately what God wants and what he meant by what he said in the Bible. And it takes so much time and so much practice of you know being spiritual and being connected to God, and you have to get all of those men all together to figure it out. And that and they have the only... to be men, damn it. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of those, course. And those you have penises, to ask them they're like antenna. We can't know. We are incapable of knowing. So those are the only people that we can go to to ask. That's what I was told. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this the thing. It's the it's the idea of an ultimate authority, that really I think is what I resented and resisted as a little kid, and all the way up until now is the idea that one person has the ultimate answer, that anybody knows ultimately what is right and wrong. It, it, I've been searching for that, and it's like every time we got a new priest and somebody had mentioned, you know, why do you keep getting new priests? And it, they had told me that it's because they had to keep rotating people so that nobody got too attached to one priest. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I'm actually starting to second guess the reasoning for that after finding out all the sex scandals. But anyway, um, um, it's the idea that I can't know for myself. I can't decide for myself. I have to ask somebody else that I just, I, I couldn't get behind. And so now that's why I'm here is because I decided that the people that I was ask that I was asking were giving me conflicting answers every time. 
um, I would experiment. I'd ask this priest or that priest, and they'd get different answers. And it just it didn't make sense. Yeah. I know for me, like for a time, it was actually attractive to have just like one source of answers. Because, yeah. you know, growing up, I was like the bane of the pastor asking all these questions. And then I just kind of, when I got older, I was like, just stopped asking questions. And mm-hmm. but Wouldn't I mean, it be nice if somebody know, just like, had all the answers? <laughs> that would be nice. Wouldn't that be cool? But, you know, like being part of the LGBT community kind of, you know, makes me question about what Christianity says, right? Because they're all like, oh, it's a sin, blah, 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 right? Yeah. So, Well, they were at the church I went to, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, Catholics are not quite as hard on that as like some of the fundamentalists are. They're like, well, it's a sin, but as long as uh, if you act on it, but not if you think it or something. And I think that there can be so extreme was, fundamentalism in any religion. Yeah, and I, I, very I, true. And Catholics used to be a lot more hardcore. In general, yeah. in general, yeah. my family Just, is pretty hardcore. Yeah. So. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Um, no, actually, I just wanted your thoughts on that because cool. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like almost at the point where I'm ready to call myself an atheist, but I'm not. Like, I still have a few random questions here and there. So, it's do you kind want of a, some advice? Yeah. Did you want to throw them out there? Um. Yeah. Actually, that would be great. Yeah, what's up? Um, so what I did was um, I came down to it and I was like, I believe in something. I know there's something and I don't know what it is. So I had um, a friend that wanted me wanted to take me to a mosque. And I was like, you know what? That sounds really cool. And I'd be really open to that because I don't know what's true. So I'm, I'm willing to go and explore all the other religions. But there's so many. And before I really get into looking into all of them, how about I start from square one? Let's figure out if I believe in a God at all. And then I can start exploring and going with my feelings and what feels more right and then figuring it out from there. And so all I did was I was like, I want to hear both sides of the story as objective as possible. I want to know actually what's true and not just what I should believe or what anybody thinks I should believe. I want to know what's true. So I Googled atheist versus theist debates on YouTube and there are hours. I just listened. Yeah, I've, I've watched some. I've even, I even watched uh, Eric's debate. So. Hey! Cool. Aww. But there's just look at it from different perspectives. Don't just pick one person and only hear their side. Listen from different religions, different atheists, different all. Just get as many kinds of perspectives as you can because what I realized very quickly was that the theist side was the same over and over and over again. It was the same argument and it failed every time I heard it. And I started realizing that it just didn't make sense. After hearing what the atheist response was, I was like, oh my God, that just makes so much more sense. And that's when I started exploring, okay, so if this makes sense, but I was told that that's not true, then why does that make sense? And so I had to explore more. Why do, why does anything make sense? Yep. Or not. Yeah. One, I, we can go into that, but you get to explore and come back when you find something and we can talk more about it. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I I will definitely do that. Cool. Can, Can I throw in one too? Yeah. Hey, Tr- mm-hmm. hey, Tracy. Um, yeah. There are people that I know who, if I were to write down everything I think about religion, would agree with me on 100% of those things that don't call themselves atheists because they don't like the word. Um, regardless of what you call yourself, um, I was afraid for a while because I thought it would make me a different human. Um, that I would somehow change, my character would change. And it took me recognizing that I'm still the same person. I still love my family. I still have the same values. And that's okay. And it, it took a lot of that for me to recognize that that change, or just saying I'm an atheist, wasn't going to magically change me. But it was just identifying something that was already there. And whether or not you yeah. decide to make that choice, you still belong here. And you don't have to call yourself an atheist, but if you walk into these doors, you're fucking welcome to be here. You're welcome to have a drink with us and eat with us and spend time with us. And no one here is going to judge you. No one here is going to make you feel bad about it. 
So just just so you know. The cool thing is that I've actually become a better person because my reason for being a good person isn't because I was told to. It's because I decided to. Yeah. I mean, like, because part of the reason why I'm saying about, you know, whether to be an atheist or about saying I'm an atheist or not is because I want to live as like, it's going to sound weird to say it this way, but I want to live as one person, not as like over here with these people. I'm like the good Mm -hmm. Christian girl. And then over here, I'm like the, you know, I'm the... Yeah, pro choice lesbian whatever right like i want to be one person mm-hmm. not like you know i'm one person here and one person there if you that deserve to get to just be you yeah. and that's why we're doing this is because we want you to be able to do that yeah so keep doing you and keep learning keep asking yeah. questions and keep exploring and ask different people and and de- keep going and demand good answers out of things Mm because you deserve them. You don't need to put up with bullshit responses. You get to understand the world around you. And um, the most exciting piece is when nobody knows because that means we've got more to learn. Mm -hmm. And that just makes the world more exciting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Big hugs. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, let's go with Michael in Texas. Hi, Michael. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> um, hey, I was, uh, well, good to talk to you guys. Uh, hi, Rick. Hi, Jenna. Hello. Um, well, I had a couple of questions here. I mean, I called about, uh, I guess, um, you know, the sons of, uh, Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a couple more questions in the meantime. I hope I hope we can cover them. But uh, anyway, um, well, hold I guess, on. Uh, I'm trying. Hold on, just just so, just so I'm clear. You wanted to talk about the story of Cain and Abel in the Book of Genesis. Well, not necessarily uh, Cain and uh, Abel. I was uh, uh, more uh, Seth and Cain. You know, their wives. Right, the ones that they, um, the ones they took from the land of Nod, across the river after they exited Eden. That one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess where did, you know, they come from? Because I don't know if uh, in the Bible, because I'm trying to, you know, learn and and study and understand, you know, the story, uh, you know, the Bible itself. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, I don't know if it says anything in the Bible where God created, uh, you know, other humans for them to marry. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know, where they came from or who they were? Um. So I, I, I've looked into it. Um, it was one of the most uncomfortable conversations I had with my pastor um, because I, I, I was I, I essentially asked him, did, was ever was it just nothing but incest? <clears throat> but I was young, like I was young. And I didn't realize just how <laughs> bad of a question I was asking him. I was just like, was everyone having sex with their mom? That's what I thought. Like, what is going on? And my pastor, my pastor said that God blessed their genes so that it would be okay. <laughs> um, so according to my church, <laughs> they did incest the earth into what it is. Um, which was weird. They said the same thing in my church. Did except, they? Except they didn't say that they made their genes okay. They just said, oh, well, that's just all there was. No, well, God blessed it. Yeah. That, it was. So I, he explained to you that uh, they had sex with uh, Eve, and that's where the children came from? Mm-hmm. I, but then I also was told that um, there were just also some humans outside of Eden. Um, they had their own city and they just they went over come. there. No, you no. You said nod, right? No, they yeah, weren't nod. the first people. No, they went and took wives and everybody was just like, where the fuck did the other <laughs> city come from? And nobody, I don't know, dude. It's not my fan it's, fiction. I, I think it's a make-believe story. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, the, well, the, the, this, is, this is kind of one of those things where like... We you gotta look, you gotta hop onto the fan sites because I'm. We look at all kinds of questions about this in the Bible, and that's one of the reasons that we're so confused as to why so many people believe it is because there's a lot that doesn't make sense in the Bible, and I had never read the Bible all the way until after I deconverted because I was convinced that I had just gone to church every single Sunday of my entire life, and every single Sunday they read the Bible, so I had I surely I'd heard it all by now. 
so Jesus loves you in the well, uh, in the comments says incest wasn't as bad then because there weren't as many bad mutations is what I've been told. Hmm. Well, and 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 you know, really, I, it doesn't even mention that in the Bible. When I asked one person, you know, I guess uh, he's studying to be uh, some sort of pastor or something, you know, and uh, what he explained to me that uh, you know women weren't uh, important, you know, at that time so that's why they didn't mention where the wives came from yeah. you know and i started uh you know i haven't you know i wasn't uh, raised in a religious background but when i started reading the bible that's when i started uh you know questioning certain things and i think this is probably uh you know at the beginning of the bible this is probably you know one of the 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 questions that uh you know the beginning of my questioning of you know certain things and you know, why isn't it mentioned there? And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I just don't know. And I was hoping that maybe you guys may have uh, had some sort of answers or maybe somewhere in the Bible it says, you know, um, they had, you know, God created other women for, you know, the uh, Seth and Cain to marry. And yeah. But uh, I just haven't come across that. So yeah. I didn't know if you guys had any other input on that. The same crap happens after the flood. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. A lot of cousin fucking going on. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. There's a well, lot of stuff that doesn't I mean, make sense to me. In the yeah, Bible. but but you know what, dude? The the interesting thing is, is when I finally gave myself permission to put the Bible down, I had no reason to pick it back up. Yeah. Um, the better question is, why are you picking it up in the first place? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, because it's a big part of uh, uh, human, I guess, uh, human nature, human civilizations. I mean, since pretty much uh, uh, the beginning of time, I mean, you know, uh, people believed in most gods, uh, you know, back in the day than Christianity with uh, one god. And and honestly, I don't know if it's uh, if there's anything to it or if I'm just wasting my time. I mean, I just don't know. Were you and, raised in, an, in any religion? No, my uh, family, they were uh, Catholic, but, you know, we didn't uh, really practice. My mom didn't take us to church or anything like that. Uh, and I really didn't start reading the Bible until, uh, you know, my adult life, probably into my early 30s. And, uh, you know, but, trying to, I guess. But were you told things like God is love and, you know, Jesus loves you? And were you told religious um, things throughout your whole life is, is more of my question. Not until... Not until I started actually questioning, uh, you know, God, the Bible, uh, you know, trying to understand if it's, you know, if it was real or not. And that's when, uh, you know, the people that I talk to, you know, that's when they'll, uh, you know, that's when they start talking to me about, uh, you know, uh, how the truth is in Jesus Christ. Just look at Jesus Christ. Uh, he loves you. And it's really just the, uh, the, the, the people that I've been asking questions, you know, to to try to understand uh, what's going on. Those are the people that kind of come at me uh, sort of in that direction. But as a child or growing up, uh, really, I didn't have any of that until I started talking to people and questioning about the Bible. So Lucky bastard. So you're agnostic right now? I don't know. I mean, putting a label on something, I, I really don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe well, what, I guess you can classify. Do you mind just letting Go me ahead. know where you're at? To be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, uh, really, the uh, the Bible itself, I, I don't understand, or I don't think that the Bible uh, was inspired by God. I think that, uh, you know, men wrote the Bible maybe to control the populace uh, uh, when the Bible was written. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as God itself, I mean, I just don't, uh, I don't know. I mean... Is it more of a, is uh, there a God or which God is it kind of question in your head? Maybe a God, maybe he created us and just left us, uh, you know, to uh, uh, defend for ourselves. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, the Bible itself uh, wasn't even uh, inspired by God. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know. But that brings me to one question, though, because uh, I was looking at something recently. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of the, the golden ratio oh, or yeah. Uh, fractals. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, see... A lot of people talk about uh, intelligent design, and uh, these two things that I was looking at, I mean, it seems to me like uh, they're discovered uh, uh, in, in nature. I mean, you know, from the smallest atom, I guess, uh, you know, even looking out into the universe. And, you know, there's something to that. And I don't know if, uh, I mean... 
that? What do you guys so think? So how do you, you think get that from might... something to that to a god? Well, I, I, it doesn't sound like he's... It sounds like it's kind of nebulous. Well, kind of however you define this god, whether it's energy or whatever, it's whatever you... However you define god, how do you get from something to it to a spiritual being or a god or a deity or however you want to word it? Or is it just in, like an unexplained thing? I don't know. I mean, these things right here, to me, I mean, it seems, I mean, because I've, uh, people talk about, uh, you know, intelligent design and uh, these type of, uh, you know, these types of things in nature, uh, you know, they they seem to have some sort of a consistent pattern. So I don't know. I mean, so uh, a, I just wanted to maybe. Does a pattern mean uh, in that there is a designer? Is there no way to have a pattern without a designer? Um, Not necessarily. Really? I don't believe. Uh, Have you looked into it? I don't know. No, I haven't really looked into it. Okay, cool. So there's actually, I think Eric is actually pulling it up right now. So um, th there, there was a little bit that I wanted to talk to you about and kind of point you toward. Was it the, the, was it the mandala thing? The, I learned it. So I learned about it in philosophy beyond belief philosophy under the influence <laughs> i might not have been there that um, oh the mandala the effect? mandala effect about yeah. how there's our patterns even if there's nobody there to create a pattern and I, so i was just saying like there's a, there are several examples that you can start looking into of uh, how you can find patterns without a designer and i was going to take it in a completely different oh direction. really uh, yeah uh, <laughs> the, the direction I think that, that uh, you know talking about that is the, the mandala effect i mean that's something that uh, has to do with our memory though i mean that uh, yeah. uh you know because these are specific uh, mathematical patterns because they can also uh, they, they believe that uh, the Fibonacci sequence is also uh, somehow related to the golden ratio. Okay, ooh, ooh, and, ooh. Uh, now I really want to share the thing. I want to share the thing. Please, can I share the thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so I'm a really, 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 really big geek and one of the things that I absolutely love is a channel called Number File um, on YouTube. What is that? Number File? Yeah. If you want to go real deep math. Like, they do some really great stuff. And um, Numberphile and a couple of other channels have talked about the golden ratio. I um, don't know anything about it at this point. And, well, the, the, the important thing to know is um, the golden ratio is not as hard to get to as you would think. And the fact that it, it occurs in nature is not a surprising thing when you get to understand the way it all works out. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it did seem complex you have the right answer right now. I don't know. And that's okay. And, and as you're exploring it, what you're asking is the right question. Mm -hmm. How do I learn? That's a fucking wonderful place to be. Yeah. You're not saying, but, but, but what, what, what you're kind of walking the line on is, well, maybe that means there's a creator. No, it just but means why? there's a thing you don't know. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But look into it and then find out and then yeah. tell other people so that they'll know. It's, and keep it, looking into it. Yeah, it's it's a totally I, good place to be. I mean, just the thing is, don't give it more weight than it deserves. You know what I mean? Like, just don't get stuck where you feel like you found the answer. Yeah, it, it, this there is, is a thing. there might not necessarily be the answer to anything. Yeah. And, uh, so we just got to come up with an answer and just kind of go with it. And then if something leads me to change it, then I change it. And almost. I, I start with I, right. I, 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 tr I try and start with zero, and then if there's an answer that comes up, I'll follow it. Right. Um, did I not say that? <laughs> no, you said come up with an answer. It's okay. And we'll come up with something that, that you believe might be true, be an and then investigate is more. Oh yeah, what hypothesize, I mean. and then yeah, or you're right. Yeah, I and I I kind of believe. I, I mean, not. me personally, I think that there may not ever, you know, I may never be able to come to a conclusion. I mean, I I may just be wasting my time, you know, just kind of looking into this no. type of stuff. But I mean, honestly, I think that uh, it, it's a big deal in a lot of people's lives. Yeah, and uh, even That's if uh, the God of the Bible time. was true. I don't think that, uh, honestly, I don't think that I would want to worship, you know, that particular God. Because, I mean, you know, some of the stories in the Bible that I've read, um, I mean, they're just, I, I just don't think a God would, would do some of the stuff right. that uh, he's commanded these men to do. Well, I wouldn't worship so, a God who um, did. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I can uh, believe in that type of God. But, I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know if maybe there is, you know, something out there. So, I mean, that's... 
you know, that's why I'm just kind of, uh, you know, kind of questioning this. And, and I don't know, I think a lot of the stuff that I, you know, read up on or, or look into, it's mostly just for, you know, entertainment, uh, for, for, you know, for whatever reason, because who knows, at the end of the day, it may not ever matter. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, I was, I didn't know my existence before I was born. And, you know, maybe after I die, I won't know my existence uh, then. That's exactly know? how I see it. When people ask, where do you think you go when you die? I say exactly where I went before I was born. Um, so we've been corrected in the live chat. I just want to throw that out there. Oh, and, really? then, and then, Michael, we, I, we do have a couple more calls we want to get to, but we've been corrected, and I just want to make sure that I throw it out there for all of us to hear. Mm -hmm. And that is um, we were talking about incest, and then we were also talking about whether or not we would worship a god that, that, was, that was that immoral. Whether, that go, whether a god exists and is immoral and whether or not incest is icky has nothing not. to do with whether or not it's true. Yeah. And so ch basing your conclusions on ick factor um, or immorality is a bad idea. It does not get you to truth. We can right. talk about moral and ethical um, uh, things. We can talk about uh, our current societal views on the way that, uh, you know, we, we choose our, our, our partners. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't have anything specifically to do with whether or not that God exists. So right. good call on the live chat. Yeah, that is absolutely that. true. Um, so, Michael, I hope you have a really good rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you for calling. Hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, we did. We, we started going down that hole. Um, yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, it's gross. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Charmaine in Alabama. Hi, Charmaine. Hey, Eric. Wait. Hey, Eric and Jenna. Hello. You've been waiting a long time to talk to us. Thank you for waiting. And we have one more call oh, after you. Oh. But... Uh, I know. That's because I love you guys. Oh, we love you too. <laughs> what did you want to talk about? Oh. Okay. Well, I'm freshly deconverted as of like six months ago. Oh, my God. Uh, you're welcome. With me. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, but. <laughs> Um, all of my friends, all of my family, including my husband, um, they're, they're still theists. Mm. And um, I've been trying to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm emotional. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've been trying to come out to my husband, um, and he just kind of shrugs off, like I'll ask a question. And I try not to start off with, hey, babe, I don't believe anymore. I've been trying to kind of build up to a point, so I've been like asking a series of questions, which started... Um, about, I guess I want to say a year ago, start asking them simple questions. Like I'll ask them a question a week and just be like, Hey, uh, on what grounds would you divorce me? Or on what grounds would you not love me anymore? Mm -hmm. On what grounds, you know, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, ultimately what he just continued to say was, you know, if you found somebody else, I'm sorry, if you can hear my four month old screaming in the background, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, uh, I was just saying, hey, buddy, like, you know, on what grounds would you not think that I was, uh, you know, that, that you wouldn't be with me anymore? And, you know, every time it's just, oh, well, if you found somebody else to be with, then that would be it. And I was like, okay. Uh, so I've been trying to build up courage. But at this point, we're like, um, we were, we're both involved in the church, um, because even though I'm an atheist, I haven't been able to just be like, okay, I stop everything. Yeah. Um, like I, I stepped down from my teaching position last year. Um, I was teaching world religions and cults. And uh, I think about three years ago, I started asking questions uh, that I would be teaching about in cult class and in world religion class. And I, uh, I got tired of people slamming other people's beliefs. And I started asking my own self what I believe in. So anyway, this is how I got deconverted. Um, but I've just been kind of just like, I don't, I don't know how long I can keep up the charade because I find that now in services, uh, when we're there and we're singing, like I can't, uh, I used to just be very, very emotionally evocative, so it didn't matter if I believed it or not. Mm -hmm. I just was like, oh, I really love the song, so I can cry. Or oh, I really love uh, this music, so I can I can dance. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's getting to the point where I can't do those things, and I just kind of find myself staring blankly. Um, 
<clears throat> and then uh, my husband sat next to me in service recently, and the pastor in Spanish was like, hey, you know, like, lift your hands and, and say, Jesus is Lord. And I stood there. And he was like, did you hear what he said? And I tried to pretend that I didn't understand or that the translation was lacking, but he knew that I understood what it meant in Spanish. Uh, and so he just kind of looked at me, and he was like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And I was just like, we'll talk later. So, so I'm going to see if I can understand what's going on real quick, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah good. So you are fully deconverted? Yes. And you have been discussing some doubts with your husband over the past year, but not, not a whole lot that he, that he finally has gotten an idea that something might be different, but he doesn't know. Right. Okay. And you're at the point where you're already kind of fed up going along with the game that everybody else is playing that you don't want to play anymore. Right. Right. Okay. Um, are do you feel that if you were to tell him flat out, I'm an atheist, what, what do you think would happen? Well, I was going to say, because he's heavily influenced by his leaders, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, because he has right. a really loving leader that actually used to be, um, he used to be, I, I forget what you call it, but anyway, he used to totally worship the energy. Uh, and um, and then, uh, but he was, you know, converted to Christianity, and so he's like, he's real compassionate, um, and he you know, it's the one that, like, encouraged my husband to not go into our marriage being macho and stuff like that. So he has a lot of weight with my husband uh, as far as what he uh, thinks or how he responds to things. Uh, but I I personally don't know how my husband would respond with just us talking. Okay. Uh, because he doesn't really individualize his thoughts. He mostly is like, you know, the Bible says or, you know, the pastor says. So okay. I don't know what he personally would do or think. So I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you if I was in your shoes, what I think I would do um, and, and offer advice that there are more people with uh, much more education um, than I have that might be able to help you better than I can. Um, Secular Therapy Project might be a really good way to go if you have the means um, I found my current therapist on psychology today by looking up by my insurance company and what I was looking for and kind of searching that way. And that's how I found mine. Um, but so seeking out help from professionals is the first step that I would do. The second step is something that I've learned and having gone through this process and debating on whether or not I should tell my husband or talk to my husband or not, that communication no matter what, whether it's faulty or not, is always a good default position to take because if there is problems with your communication, you have to communicate to discover what those problems are and in order to fix them. You have to communicate in order to understand where the other person's coming from, where they are, because if you don't, well, then you don't know what kind of a relationship you're in and you can't have a healthy relationship that way. And it's, again, it's just my personal opinion from my own personal experience. Um, I again, I would come to the conclusion that there is a possibility that my marriage not, might not make it through that because I had built a relationship with a God and a religion background, um, understanding that that was part of the contract that I essentially signed. I would understand that that could possibly come to an end, but that not being the goal, usually, um, you just have to accept that there are some things might happen that you might not want, but you know, you, all you can do is the best you can you know and yeah if, if i can dovetail in just a little sure, bit yeah um the, the the only thing that i would add um after what you said because what you said is yes that um the only thing i would add in is when you're communicating um i know that this was a lesson that i've learned and it's helped and that is talk about yourself mm -hmm. um it can sometimes come off as an accusation um, unintentionally when you're communicating about these things. And so the best kind of communication that I've had was one where I said, hey, there's this thing going on and I'm really, really nervous. I'm afraid to tell you because I love you. And I'm mm -hmm. afraid that by talking to you about this, it would hurt the way you think about me. 
but it's right. important that I talk to you because I love you. Right. And so... It's important to me to understand where you're coming from because I love you. Yeah. Or for, so, for you, yeah. Right. It's just to, to say that. And, and so when you start there, instead of saying, you know, I am an atheist, deal with it, mm -hmm. because a lot of people have, <laughs> well, a lot of people have baggage with it. They think atheist means all of these other things. They think atheist means, you know, you hate God, you worship the devil, you go out and you, you perform abortions every week and you go out and you, you, you whatever, all of these different things. And um, a lot of people read that as, I don't want to have a relationship with you anymore. And that can hurt. Prefacing it and saying, hey, I care about you and it's, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you, to talk about this because because I, I I love you. Um, letting him know that you're still the person who loves him. You're still you. And that you're telling them because you love them. That that has helped a lot in my life. And I don't know if ne that's necessarily going to be what helps in yours, but that's the best advice I have. Um, I highly suggest what Jenna said, and that is, getting therapy first or talking to a therapist. That way they can understand your individual unique situation. Mm -hmm. One thing that I learned in rehab was using the phrase, I'm feeling blank. Actually saying out loud to someone, I'm feeling like this. Because we don't, something that I've learned is that we don't say that enough and we don't ask in return. I'm feeling like this, how are you feeling? We say, how are you? And we say, fine. Great. Good. Right. Sure. We don't think about it. We don't actually ask ourselves, how am I feeling? And what caused me to feel this way? And alternatively, asking our partner, hey, when I was going through that really rough time, you know, a week ago, and I was having, I was just complaining and crying all the time. How were you feeling when I was going through that? That is something that had not occurred to me to ask about my husband when I was going through stuff until I started seeing a therapist. She asked me, how was your husband feeling? And I was like, I never thought to ask. <laughs> gotcha. I, I would definitely listen to Jenna because I'm single. She's still happily married. <laughs> so <laughs> take her advice. <laughs> but regardless of what happens, big hugs. I'm, I'm, I'm glad and you called You know in. what? You're doing the right thing, and you have support. Just keep, just know that you're not alone. Uh, there are people out there. There are people that you can find. Um, there's a the internet helps. Th there's a love bomb going on in the yeah, live chat. Yeah, check out the live chat. And you, you should see these people on the other side of the glass. Yeah. <laughs> We're all rooting for you. Well, oh, thank you. Big hugs, and you take care, okay? Thank you. You too. Thank, thank you. you. We've got more callers to take. Uh, let's move on because we are running late. <laughs> um, I've got the warm fuzzies now. How about you? Yeah, that was fun. That's, that's, that's a tough position to be in. Yeah. yeah. We're late. Yeah, recently. But you know what? I'd rather be on this side of things than where I was any day. Any day. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. Me too. Mark in Germany, you have been waiting for far, far too long. Thank you, Mark. Good talk. Uh, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Perfect. Um, I got the warm fuzzies as well. So. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I've been watching your show and, and the Atheist Experience for, for ages, but I never really had a, a reason really to, to call you. Um, okay. I, I, I work as, a, as an English teacher out here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I recently had a new class. I work for a, I work for a language school, so basically I get given classes. I'm not I'm not a freelancer. I kind of get given classes, and I just I just take them and I I do, I do what I'm told basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I found out that the reason they want to learn English is because they are Jehovah's Witnesses, and they are going to a big international conference in South Africa in September. And, and that's why they're learning a new language. Yes, because the conference will be completely in English. Um, wow, some of them that's have dedication. a little bit of experience. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and let me preface this by saying they're really, really amazing, lovely people. Oh, I get yeah. them really well and, and they're, they're super nice. Yeah, and I wouldn't sure. have, um, but the thing is that I don't really know 
how I feel about it because I feel like I'm indirectly helping people spread their religion. Okay. I'm an atheist. I'm a former Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of, I try and stay away from being too anti-theist, but I Mm -hmm. do get a little bit angry and I have, I love having a good debate. Usually I'm one of these people who just goes, gets down to work and I can't really bring anything up with them in this professional setting because obviously my job is to teach English and not Mm -hmm. to street epistemology or anything like that but i just wondered if you had any advice as to whether you think i should carry on teaching them or if i should speak to my boss or anything about it because i I, I just (laughs) i I don't know how comfortable i feel about it john and i are grinning ear to ear (laughs) you want to go first yeah (laughs) yeah keep doing what you're doing the more that you can be present and be an example to people the more opportunities people have to learn from you okay Yep. I, I, that exactly. Um, do you know how hard it is to get in touch with J dubs? I mean, to put them in a position where they're learning from you is tough, Mm -hmm. is tough. You have an opportunity in any way, even if it's a small way to be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Foster the love of Mm. learning. Mm. I mean, make it an exciting class. Make it something that they're like, holy crap, I'm having fun learning this. I want to learn more. Ask them the questions that you know they're not getting asked at home. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be tough. It doesn't have to be bleeding. It it doesn't have to be deceptive. And it doesn't even have to be about Jehovah's Witnesses. No, it can just be philosophical, just anything. You Just branching. Yeah. Your mind out. <laughs> I, really, anything. Um, the more education somebody gets, the better tools that you give them, the better they're going to be able to go on. And the thing is, is if they don't have you teaching them, they're going to find somebody else. And who knows who they're going to get next. So take that. Take it and run with it and be an awesome teacher. Um, don't ever you know, hold back education. And, and this, is, this is an opportunity that not everybody gets. When especially since you say that they're, they're good people and they're people that you care about, you know, that's an even bigger sign that you want to stick around them. Yeah. That means that they, have, I mean, they have the right kind of ideas about how to, you know, be good people, right? Yeah. You, you got you to gotta go in and be Robin Williams from Dead yeah. Poet Society. Captain, my captain. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Like. That would be awesome. <laughs> right. But it's, those, it's that one person who has this, uh, that, that one opportunity to change, how, you know, how many lives. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just being an example. Yeah, All you, have to, you don't have to tell them anything. Mm. Um, but okay. I mean, we had we had a we had a, um, a moment in the last class when uh, they'd sort of done a bit of homework, and one of the guys came in and told us they'd been in Berlin this weekend setting up for a because there's a conference. There was a conference this weekend, and they kind of because uh, they don't know my views on it, or they didn't, and they kind of said, "Oh, anyone's welcome to come." And I felt like they were, you know, doing what Jehovah's Witnesses do and inviting me and everything. And I kind of all I said was. It's not my thing, but thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how acceptable it is. I know that the guys, you know, my bosses and stuff, they they try and keep it fun, but we don't generally talk about politics or religion or those kind of things with unless unless the students have specifically asked to talk about, you know, Brexit or or what's going on in Germany at the moment or in America, Donald Trump, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I just. Uh, I'm trying to figure out sort of how to how to weave my way and how to deal with it and and how to how to best yeah. be the change you want to be exactly um, it, and yeah but it's but it's it's so much more than religion you know once mm. once you answer that one question we still have to build a world together that we can all live in and be good to each other you know if if they just if the only thing that they take away from that is if somehow they find out that you're not a Jehovah's Witness and you're a good person, yeah. that is huge. Mm. You know, there are different positions for different people. And I'm in a position where I was raised with such an extreme example of religion that now that I've discovered what life is like without it, I have, I have no choice but to be motivated to change the world and come out as an atheist and try to make changes. But... There are also people who are in a position where it would not necessarily be helpful for them to come out as atheists. For example, um, I've been learning a lot from Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he won't label himself an atheist um, for reasons that he's because he he claims he's a teacher. He he's not here to tell you what side to choose. He's here to present you some information. Mm. You know. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's some, a, some people that take that stance, and that, that's necessary. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. we're going to push for people to be out atheists, but... Yeah, but... We're, we're not going to hate you. We're not going to tell you that there's one right way to do it. We'll just think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Mark, right, guys. we are super, super late. I don't want to take any more of your time, so... Uh, uh, yeah. Calling. Thanks for taking my call, and uh, Thank you for calling. I really enjoyed the show today. And uh, keep doing, keep up the good good work. Huh? We'll Thank do. you. We'll do. Oh my goodness, that was one heck of an episode. We are way, way over time. Oh, I yeah. um, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to those people in the back. Can do we have a camera in the back? Can we can we see the crew at all? Possibly. Yes. Yay! Hello, everyone. All the crew. Thank you so much for doing what you do. We are way over time, and you're really putting in a whole bunch of work. Thank you so much. Um, Jenna, this has been fun. Yay. What did you think? I thought it was a blast. Right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're diving right in. It's like you've been doing this forever. This is my calling. Jesus told me. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> and that was the end of Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to be here next week. Jamie's going to be here next week. I'm going to be up in Nashville. Again, if you want to check it out, check out Ask and Wonder. Um, and uh, that event's going on. Otherwise, I'll be back in two weeks. Jenna, I want to see more of you here at the ACA. I want to see you on more programming. Uh... Oh, fuck off, Matt. I've got her. <laughs> Matt's on the other side of the glass going, no, no, she's with me. <laughs> Whatever. If you want to catch a little bit more of me before the end of the day, I'm going to be on the Atheist Experience. We've got those love rings up. <laughs> what? What? Is she taking my spot? You don't get to say no to me. <laughs> We're talking after the show. All right. Uh, thank you, live studio audience. Thank you. <laughs> and um, for those of you who don't believe, this is your community. You can come here, and it doesn't matter if you only ever show up once. You belong here. This is something that we're building together, and we're building it for each other because we're the only ones we got. Mm -hmm. But for those of you, do you remember how to sign off? Do you no, know how to sign I off? No, we, we point at the camera, and we say, we don't hate you. We just think you're wrong. Okay, ready? So I'm going to say, for those of you who do believe, we don't, we don't hate, hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. See you next week. <laughs>